In other words, the House switches hands, Democrats control it. What does that mean? For the markets, uh, it, it, split government tends to be a good thing. Uh, for example, when uh, Ronald Reagan uh, saw the Republicans lose 27 uh, seats in the midterm elections of 1982, the market uh, went up 3.9%. The very next day, it was up 18% six months later, 20% a year later. In 2006, when George Bush had to deal with the Democratic House and the Senate, uh, the market was up about 9% six months later about 7% a year later. So that's just the market. Now, whether that translates into the economy, anyone's guess, let's get the read from Fox Business Network's Susan Lee, market analyst Dan Geltrude, and last but not least, Jonas Max Ferris. Uh, Dan, to you on that, what do you, what do you think? Split what? government is good. One word, Neil, gridlock. That's what we're headed for, which, as you made reference to, isn't the worst thing because the market views things as uh, they like certainty. So if we're in gridlock, there's some certainty there. What I think happens if the Democrats do take the House, and I'm not so sure that they will, but no, if, they, either, no. if they, because I think there's a lot of closet Trump supporters out there that are not showing up in any polling. But what I think happens if we do have gridlock because of split government, I think the Fed takes their foot off the pedal on interest rates and the market will continue. I don't see a bear market. The I market often, usually goes up anyways a year after the midterms, about 12 to 15 percent, because you know this the overhang is that, just Susan, out of the way. It's interesting is when if we've had a, a wild run up prior. If we've had a huge market, which we've had over mm -hmm. the last year, um, the calendar year, right? Um, it's a little different, but but it is what it is. Over and, the last to your seven point, years, yeah. and I'm wondering uh, the people you talk to, um, w would they like better? This is a little largely the, the investment crowd is a largely Republican crowd. I'm, Absolutely, I'm not casting political aspersions here, but so if they if the Republicans were to hang on to the House, what is what is their sense about? how the markets would react to that. Well, I think it would be a positive, actually, for the markets because maybe we, we, you know, we wouldn't have our time taken up with unnecessary hearings, you know, talk about implementing more regulation. I, I think that would be market positive to get something done, but also the status quo, people are just comfortable knowing that there's gridlock and there are separated houses of government. But I, I would imagine that if both houses go the Republican GOP way, that uh, like the tax cuts, we actually get some, some more juice in the markets. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, the only good thing of having that kind of situation is that the big spending initiatives, the things that lead to deficit growth, happen when everybody's in charge. So you get Obamacare when there's one party in charge. You get Medicare Part D under Bush when everyone's in charge. You get the defense spending that just went up when there's one. So you're not going to get major initiatives. There. And the market is starting to worry about government That's a good borrowing. Point, that if you have a full run of the table, yeah. who's That's ever in charge, you, the deficits never, increase. Yeah. Right? There's not enough agreement to pass anything, whether it's a big tax cut or a big spending plan. Well, that stands that the point, said, though. That's why that's good. The story is not that gravy, though, and here's here's why. Because this time the Democratic Party is shifting. It's kind of doing what the Tea Party did when Obama won. It's shifting further left. You know, we just showed Trump is around running around to help people. Bill Clinton doesn't get to run around anymore. The whole Clinton era is now over. It was a question. His whole background right. is now in question. Hillary law, it took an embarrassing loss for the party, and the party is going Democratic Socialist. And that policy that is not a pro-corporate policy. I mean, we all talk about how bad Obamacare is and, and everything else, but at the end of the day, the Clinton era stuff is still pro-government. They work with these companies. The, the healthcare industry created Obamacare. When you talk about Medicare for all, that is not a move that the healthcare industry likes. They don't want to replace government subsidized private health care with lines for lower cost health care that create shortages. That doesn't mean, lead to profits in that industry. But so, what do you think gets done over the next four years if somebody like Maxine Waters becomes the right. chairwoman of the House Financial Services Committee? I would imagine that there would be lots of hearings, lots of uh, probably a better look at Dodd-Frank being reinstated, more right. regulation, banks hauled in front of Senate and Congress. I mean, is that, is that getting something done? Is that efficiency? I think it depends how it's not so much the numbers and who wins that I think it's how far left the the policy goes and how many people go out and vote for the Democrat, how how popular these ideas become and do they spread. It wasn't popular, you know, with Democrats even a few years ago. They didn't want to go Medicare for all for a variety of reasons. Again, they're they're kind but of But healthcare old. itself is a big issue, Dan. It and is. it's one one that surprised a lot of Republicans that it would still resonate now. The vote could be counter to that. Uh, but, but what do you make of that and whether Republicans were, were caught flat-footed on that or that this is uh, something that it works in their favor as well? I actually think health care is more of an emotional issue than anything else. Now, we are going to have rising costs in health care no matter what happens with Congress. The one thing we could be certain of, health care costs are going to go up. 
I, I want to go back to what Susan said for a moment. If the Republicans hold Congress, I think the economy takes off. And it also sends um, the word out internationally that this president is supported. So what happens with tariffs with China? Now, okay. China, China looks at that because that has an impact on us. China looks at that and says, hey, you know what? The American people are behind this president. It allows him to play hardball with the Chinese and we make more progress. I think the market will like that. Well, let me ask you guys about the recent market volatility. I mean, uh, we, we did come off our lows this week, but Friday there was a sell-off. And I'm wondering whether that noise, um, what do you think, Susan, is, is, is part of, you know, voters thinking? Uh, I, I don't know if it really moves on the upside or downside right. unless it's really significant. <laughs> unless but what do you think? really significant. I agree. I think this is just part of the natural cycle when markets go up as much as they have since Election Day. A 10 percent correction is just all part of the normal washout. And I but think it's healthy But a 10 percent correction well. within days can jar folks. Yeah, it can't, I think psyches, yes. Yeah. It does impact sentiment. But we've seen this before. Maybe people who have You're been right. around for the last 10 years and you know are young to the market. But this is something that goes up, goes down. But I would say that what happens on Tuesday and if we do have something solid, I think there's something to trade off of. What do you think, Jonas? It, but it's down 10 percent. But it's like if you open your 401k from a year ago, it's up a lot. And like that, that's different. If it was just flat and then it tanked 10 percent, people would be like, what's going on here? I'm broker than I was a year ago or two. But like you're not. And most people, you know, even people and this gets the kind of the moderate maybe voter for Trump is that they don't want to end. That's why Trump was coming out and tweeting about your 401k tanking. He knows that's in the back of people who are very liberal, but yet have some money that they don't want destroyed by Democrat socialism, and they want to keep the gains, and the gains are there. Yes, it got scary recently, but that is one month of volatility off a very long, strong market. Mm -hmm. It goes even before Trump, obviously. But that's not going to bring people to the polls, even though he's dropping that out there. Yeah, right that's why that. he's going to the caravan and the emotional issues. Uh, a lot of people are feeling Anger emotional. Anger gets them out there. Exactly. A good is economy not. is not going to do it. He's got to go elsewhere to gin up but his Maybe he's base. just trying to get you to not right. to, the, the Democrat to do what they did with the Clinton. Does not get out and vote because you're like, well, I'm not that enthusiastic about people in my district who want to go more socialist. Like, I'm not really going to go for a Republican, but I'm just not going to vote because well, I don't I'm believe scared. the angry accountant here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not an angry guy. You know? I'm happy to be here. All right, guys, thank you all very, very much. Uh, obviously, a lot of politicking going on the part of the president and the vice president speaking.